the Bible origin of black people and the curse of Noah. If I ask you to tell me how the black race started, according to the Bible, what would you say? Like many, you probably do not know. When many people think of the Bible, what comes to mind is not black or African people. They think of the Jews, the Egyptian Arabs, the Assyrians, and so on. But they do not think of the biblical origin of black people. Beyond Adam and Eve, the primordial parents of the human race, according to the Bible, many people cannot trace the lineage of the black race to characters in the Bible. In this video, we are going to explore this interesting topic and consider what it means for Africans and black people in general to feel and own their biblical heritage. Also, if you watch till the end, you will learn whether or not the black race was placed under a curse, as many have said. Before we start, why don't you support our work and research by clicking on the notification icon to get more updates from us. If you are new here, we encourage you to subscribe to this channel and like this video. It will certainly be helpful to us. Now let's get started. The world is diverse and multiracial, just as God intended it to be. However, there are not many ethnic groups with a rich and long history as black people. The evidence of this can be found in the divinely inspired document called the Holy Scriptures. Many people are surprised to learn that the Bible talks about the origins of the African people, including their ancestral dark-skinned kings and queens of ancient times. According to the Holy Scriptures, all current peoples are descendants of Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem was the eldest son of Noah. He is considered the ancestor of the Semitic peoples, including the Hebrews, Arabs, and Arameans. Ham was the second son of Noah. He is recognized as the ancestor of various African and Middle Eastern peoples, including the Egyptians, Canaanites, and Cushites. Japheth was the youngest son of Noah. He is believed to be the ancestor of several European and Asian peoples, including the Greeks, Romans, and Persians. These three sons of Noah, along with their wives, played a significant role in repopulating the earth after the Great Flood, according to biblical accounts. For this video, we are more interested in Ham as the father of the black nation. How did this come to happen? The specific section of the Bible often cited as associating Ham as the ancestor of African peoples is Genesis 9, 18, 27. This passage recounts an incident involving Noah and his sons after the flood. While Noah was drunk and uncovered in his tent, Ham saw his father's nakedness and told his brothers Shem and Japheth about it. This was a grievous sin in ancient time. When Noah woke up, he cursed Canaan, who was Ham's son. Although the curse was directed at Canaan, some interpretations and historical traditions have extended the curse to include Ham's descendants, particularly the African peoples. After the flood, Noah and his three sons were entrusted with the task of continuing the lineage of Adam and populating the world once again. With only Noah, his wife, their three sons, and their daughters-in-law, humanity had to start anew. In the Bible, Ham is recognized as the ancestor of African and black peoples, with his name frequently associated with Africa. The book of Psalms even identifies him as the forefather of the ancient Egyptians. In the book of Psalms, specifically Psalm 78 verse 51, the Bible states, He struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, the first fruits of manhood in the tents of Ham. This verse suggests that the Egyptian people were descendants of Ham and were affected by the plague of the firstborn during the time of Moses and the Exodus. In addition to the ancient rabbinical traditions, Jewish folklore, and other ancient sources consistently link him to black and African peoples. It's worth noting that the name Ham itself means burned or dark in Hebrew, Aramaic, and other ancient languages, referring to the skin tone of Ham and his offspring. In chapter 10 of the book of Genesis, specifically between verses 6 and 14, more details about Ham's lineage, also known as the Hamitic peoples, can be found. In the Table of Nations in Genesis 10:6, the sons of Ham are listed as Cush, Mizraim, also known as Egypt, Put, and Canaan. 
Fut is often associated with ancient Libya or regions in North Africa. The descendants of Fut are believed to have inhabited parts of North Africa, including modern-day Libya. Canaan, specifically, is the father of the Canaanites and not the Africans. It's crucial to understand that Canaan represents a distinct region and people. The sons of Cush, on the other hand, are Seba, Havila, Sabta, Raama, Sabteca, and Nimrod. Seba is mentioned in Genesis 10, 7 as one of the sons of Cush. The descendants of Seba are believed to have settled in the region of present-day Sudan or Ethiopia. Havila is also listed as a son of Cush in the same verse. The location associated with the descendants of Havila is debated among scholars, with possibilities ranging from Eastern Africa to Arabia. Sabta is named as a son of Cush. The descendants of Sabta are traditionally connected with the region of Hadramaut in present-day Yemen. Rama is mentioned as a son of Cush in Genesis 10, 7. The descendants of Rama are often linked to regions in southern Arabia, such as modern-day Oman and Yemen. Sabteca is also included as a son of Cush in Genesis 10, 7. The exact identification and location of the descendants of Sabteca are uncertain. Although Nimrod is not specifically listed as a son of Cush, Genesis 10, 8 describes Nimrod as a mighty warrior, and states that he was a descendant of Ham, who is the father of Cush. Nimrod is associated with the foundation of several significant cities in Mesopotamia, including Babylon and Nineveh. As noted earlier, Mizraim, also known as Egypt, is mentioned in the Bible as one of the sons of Ham. Mizraim, the ancestor of the Ludites, is associated with North African peoples like the Ammonites, the Moabites, and of course, the Egyptians. From Mizraim's lineage, the Philistines emerged. Cush is the father of many modern nations, including the people of Ethiopia. In fact, all Ethiopians and the people of Nubia, formerly known as the Kingdom of Cush, trace their ancestry from Cush. The people of South India, as well as other Africans such as the Malians, Eritreans, Kenyans, Congolese, and Bantu, have Cushite ancestry. The term Kush is often associated with Ethiopia, Sudan, and Africa in the Bible, with its literal meaning being Ethiopia or black. As I mentioned before, Ham had another son named Put or Foot. The name Put or Foot originates from a word meaning landmark and is a reference to tribal hunters in Africa. Put is considered the father of the native black Libyans in Libya, as well as several other African peoples. Now let's touch upon the infamous Curse of Ham, or more accurately, the Curse of Canaan. In ancient time, many people misinterpreted this curse, described in chapter 9 of the book of Genesis. As referenced earlier, the text states that after Noah became drunk, his son Ham did not cover his nakedness, and instead informed his other brothers about it. As a result, Noah cursed one of Ham's sons, specifically Canaan. This may seem strange to many, well, it is strange. First, why Canaan and not his father, who actually committed the act? The reason is because the cause was meant to be generational and not individualistic. I believe Noah's curse is metaphor for the consequence of despising our fathers or our heritage. It took many of your ancestors to get you where you are right now. You may improve on their effort, but never ever ridicule them or make mockery of them. Otherwise, you will inherit the curse of Noah and become metaphorically enslaved to your brothers. The second point people raise is why the curse is so excessive. This is where I digress slightly from popular interpretations. Perhaps Noah's statement is not to be a curse as we understand it. Perhaps it is a warning. It is true that a curse can be an expression or wish for something bad to happen to someone. However, it could also be an expression of the likely consequence of an action. Perhaps Noah meant the latter. It seems more likely that Noah's curse is a warning to Canaan about the consequence of his father's action. Yet that is not the most important point from the story. The most important point is that Canaan and his offspring has a choice. They could be like their father and inherit the consequences of his actions, or they could learn from his mistakes. Moreover, when Jesus came and died for our sins and awash us with the gift of redemption, all curses, ancestral or not, become automatically broken. Now let's return to the question of whether it was Africans that were cursed by Noah. 
It's important to mention that Ham and his other three children, Cush, Mizraim, and Canaan, are all associated with African peoples. It's also crucial to emphasize that black peoples were not cursed. If anything, the curse actually fell upon Canaan, the father of the Canaanites who inhabited the Middle East. It is essential to clarify that interpreting the biblical text in a way that suggests African peoples were cursed is a false interpretation. The curse specifically targets Canaan, the ancestor of the Canaanite peoples. However, as stated earlier perhaps, the so-called curse is rather a warning against despising one's heritage. Nevertheless, we know that Ham is the ancestor of all African and South Indian peoples, and he lived a remarkably long life, having been born before the flood. He enjoyed a lifespan that allowed him to witness even the fifth and sixth generation of his family. Much like Shem, who lived to be approximately 600 years old, Ham is believed to have lived around that age or even longer, even though a precise confirmation of his age is absent from the Bible. The location of Ham's tomb remains uncertain, but various theories and studies suggest possibilities such as the Ethiopian region or even Nubia. Others propose that his burial site could be in Mesopotamia, the land of the Sumerians. However, many agree that Ham's final resting place is in Africa, specifically in Sudan or Ethiopia. In conclusion, the Book of Jubilees provides us with further information about Ham and events involving Noah's family and the three lineages, the lineage of Ham, the lineage of Shem, and the lineage of Japheth. In this ancient Jewish manuscript, which was believed to be credible during the time of Christ and even earlier, it is reported that Ham was the founder of the first city in the first province after the flood, and he named the city after his beloved wife, Nama. Thank you for watching. Your likes are greatly appreciated. Please subscribe and share this video so that others can also benefit from its contents.